Hey everyone, welcome back to another wrestling review. With me once again, we have Campo Reviews, who now reviews wrestling on top of movies and TV shows. So Campo is really living up to his name. Before we get started, though, um, I want you guys to check out the Discord server. I'm close to 250 followers, so I want you guys to just click on that bell, click on that notification, click on that subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, and it helps me out a lot. So that would be really appreciated. Um, with that out of the way, uh, you'll find Campo stuff in the description below. So with that out of the way, let us get straight into the review. Campo, Rumble on 44th Street. Let's start with that first match. What was your first impression when you saw this uh, pay per view? Actually, let's go. Okay, well, first. hold on, hold on. Are we doing the pre show match? I didn't watch the pre show. Did you, Kylie Ray? And uh... yeah, so uh, it. Okay, well, we'll get there. Um, okay. What What was my initial reaction? Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. To be honest with you, for a company as big as they are, and I know they play a lot of like gyms and stuff like that, but I understand yeah. that that's the way of japan that's how wrestling has always been done there and they fit like decent amount of people in some of those gyms yeah. they're they don't really have a lot of like basketball or hockey type arenas right so you it's hard to do stuff like especially that, especially in in new york city this was right in new york city yeah so for being in this tiny ass little place and once again i understand that this is like a place where they do wrestling it's like a, a a venue that's hosted many wrestling things mm -hmm. and new Japan ha has frequented frequented this place. Yeah. Before. I think this place only, it only holds about 2000 people, but it felt more indie than like impact does. It like, it was like, uh, and, a legitimate... I'll, and I'll say this and I'll get to this later, but the lighting. Okay. The lighting was bad. The camera work was terrible. The pro overall production value was zero. Yeah, the production from backstage for camera switching was terrible. Yeah, People we'll get to that later when, when we talk about. Oh, there's a backstage segment. We'll talk about that later. But yeah, it, it didn't. It like felt said, cheap. Even Impact has more production quality than what happened here. And for New Japan, who's like WWE level of big worldwide, it's kind of I I didn't enjoy. I didn't have. Yeah, it's a like good it's, time it would be like WWE when they do their Saudi Arabia shows and and produce a wet fart of a show. Yeah, they went into like a bar and like filmed it. Not to mention the ring, and, and was kids, much smaller. It's much smaller. There's no space between the ring and the uh, guardrail. The barricades. Yep. Uh, so there was less room to work around. Like it was a one second walk from stage to to ring. Literally down a one set of steps but and for the most part i was like okay this is this is like i i didn't it, it yeah. bothered me but i it's not a killer okay no but then like, when you have a guy like jay white and okada in a place like this i'm like mm, uh, maybe maybe you guys are not doing the right thing here yeah like, but i won't let the production quality take away from the card itself i tried to block all that yeah i mean that's fair that, that i did as well yeah but the, the the environment wasn't there for me. It like, already took a, it already took something away. Like I said it five times already. But Impact puts on a less indie feeling show than this did. This was like legit. Yeah. This was Rev Pro. This was literally Rev yeah, Pro. It felt like it. Yeah. It filmed in a bar. They just set up or a, or a an ring. ICW show. Yeah, exactly. ICW. Yeah. ICW is even more so. Just filmed in a bar. Like yeah. we set up a ring in a bar. Um. um. But yeah. but yeah, with with that out of the way, um, did you watch the pre-show then? Yes, I did. So I'll just and? do it quick. So yeah, um, it was it was fine. I, I still stick with my statement of before that. Uh, as far as I don't know if you would consider her independent, but as far as smaller uh company wrestlers go, Smiley Kylie's one of the most underappreciated yeah. female wrestlers. Uh, it's really weird that like maybe she's doing it for her own mental health. That she's like, like, because she could take her own, she could work at her own pace at this yeah. point. But that's but, why she left AEW. That's why. But but it does feel like she's underutilized, and uh, they won the match, Smiley Kylie and whoever yeah. was her partner, Tiara James, and it, it they played into it. It worked well because those she was so much bigger than the two Japanese wrestlers. Like her thigh was the size of the other girl's whole body, and they 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 played. And she's the not match even a big that. girl. No, she's not. That's what I mean. And, and she, but they played to that, and they made yeah. it feel that way. And and it, it was fine. It was a fine opener. Okay. 
Um, nothing special. Nothing special. Okay. So then we get to the uh, first match proper, which was House of Torture of Yujiro. Or Yujiro oh, before we get into the actual match, one thing I noticed right off the bat, Ian Riccoboni and Matt Raywald and Alex Kozlov were the commentators. No Kevin Kelly on English commentary. Yes. And guess what? For a company as big as New Japan, do we day one English ringside? Uh, I lost the word. Commentary. Commentary. You can't watch it in English. I watch it in English. I couldn't get it in English no matter what I did. Really? I watched yep. it in English. So I was able to get it in English. Um, Like I said, it was Ian Riccoboni, which is fine. I like Ian Riccoboni, the ROH ring announcer. Yeah, take, uh, and Matt Raywald is the guy from Impact. The color guy, not the main guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Alex Kozlov, former Rapongi Vice, former... He was the worst part of the commentary team. I mean, be- so... I, I watch it in Japanese, and as you get through the matches, you kind of just tune it out. You can no, you learn to just like hear it because you can understand what they're saying in the context of what's happening. Yeah, like you know what I mean. Like, oh, what a thing! You're like, okay, yeah, I get what they're saying, but like yeah. the small talk is where you're like, you have no idea what's going you're on. Lost. The issue yeah. I have with the Japanese commentary, I told you this. It feels like you're watching a morning talk show. They're all like whispering to each other. I was like, what the fuck is this? This is a wrestling. You're like, yeah. They're like, very, yeah, they're very proper and very... And then yeah. all of Nanor, they'll yell one word and then it's back to whispering again. Yeah. But uh, so with that out of the way, um, so we're going to get two different experiences because I watched it in English and you watched it in Japanese. Yeah. I'll, I'll rewatch the matches I liked in, in English. Um, so the first match off the bat is Yujiro Takahashi and Sho versus Rocky Romero. And yo, um, again, no Peter. Yeah, it, it seems like a trend here where whenever he's not wrestling on his own, there's no Peter. There's no Peter, yeah. Um, I mean, it was a fun opening match. Um, I've always enjoyed watching Rocky Romero. Rocky Romero's always been fun to watch. The Alex Kozlov on commentary, they teamed up the night before on, a, like, I guess it was a house show they had the night before. And uh, he took the he ended up taking the loss because it was a reunited uh, forever hooligans. With uh, Alex Kozlov and Romero, they were they lost to the DKC and Kevin Knight, who will factor into the next match. But uh, I mean, for an opening match, it was fine. It wasn't uh, again show with the with the wrench. Yeah. It, okay. So the most interesting element of this match for me, which I'm sure it was for you as well, was getting show against uh, Yo against Yo. Yeah. I absolutely. Mean, and to me, that's like what you want to see because they're both two people who were up and coming guys from the young dragon ish mm-hmm. times yep. to Rapongi 3k Rapongi 3k. But now they're both established and they're both really, really amazing wrestlers, but neither one of them has even remotely got any sort of push, which yeah. I find absolutely crazy. And they're stuck in these dumb roles where you're like the, the 17th option in, uh, What's the group called? Sorry. House of Torture. No, no, the other the other guys. Chaos. Chaos. You're the yep. 17th option in Chaos and you in House of Torture you cheat every single match. Yeah. Every single match is But the it's, same it's getting old. I find Yeah, it's it. really old. I'm surprised Dick to go didn't come out from under the ring. Right? He probably can't cross the border. Um, yeah, he's probably not allowed. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the best, I think the most interesting thing, they made a, they made note a lot that the um, House of Torture are this never open six weight or whatever, six man tag champions um, with evil. They made a load of that after show hits. Uh, was it Rocky or Yo with the with the wrench? I can't remember who he hit. I'm pretty he, sure it was. Uh, uh, he hit Yo. yo. Yeah, yeah, he hit Yo with the wrench and Yo took the fall in this one. Um the music uh, the goes to black and you hear like this opera music playing. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Like what kind of, and they're all like staring at the screen and turns out it's Leo rush. I enjoyed that little bit there. Cause I was yeah. like, Holy shit. Who is this? Yeah. It had me guessing and it's Leo rush and Leo rush. I mean, he's okay, but I wasn't. Expecting- Cause you know, I you know what I think. Mm. I think they're going to make a new Rapongi three K and it's going to be Leo rush and yo. Yeah. I could see that, or the two of them with Rocky will go after the six men. Possible, same, same, same idea. Yeah, um, because yeah, they, they signed him not too long ago, and they're like, I haven't, don't really know what to do with the guy. Yeah, so I think this is a good spot. This could elevate Yo a little bit more. 
I noticed a lot of these matches as we go later in the card. Um, a lot of them were showcase matches more than anything for the younger talent. Yeah, it, to be honest with you, what when we were looking at the card pre-watch, I was like, okay, yeah, this is a pretty good card. But as I'm watching the pay-per-view, every time the match started, I was like, I don't want to watch this match. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, yeah. I know that sounds it's, really it's, bad, but, but I was like, I don't want to watch this match. I'm looking at uh, third, uh, the second match, the third match, the fourth match, the fifth match, the, even the sixth match, up to the women's match. These were all well-established stars against an up-and-comer. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So based on quality, listen, Rocky Romero is a great wrestler. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, Yujiro is like, uh, I don't understand where this is coming from now after at like year 18 of being a wrestler that all of a sudden now he's like a sex god wrestler. Like, I don't mean that like how he looks. I mean, his skill level is like he's unstoppable. It's through the roof. Yeah, he's he really he that's another he's shown a lot like since watching since since the G1 basically uh, Takahashi's been on a roll. Absolutely. And I wanted to see show and yo, I haven't seen show almost wrestle at all. Yeah, since I've been watching New Japan. Um, but it's, I could see, I could see, uh, Takahashi breaking out, having one last, maybe a baby face run with this before he retires. Because yeah, he's, cause house of torture is a really weird group where even though they're heels, they're kind of like the comedy act. That's what people like. Yeah. And I see, I see them. I could see this down the road, maybe at like a Russell kingdom. They finally turn on him and they kick him out of the group. Yeah. It's going to have to happen with show soon eventually yeah. too. Yeah, but I mean, it was a decent opening match. It was fine. Of, yeah. Um, next match of the night was for the never open weight tag team championships of the Motor City Machine Guns against Aussie Open of Kyle Fletcher and Mark Davis and Kevin Knight and the DKC. Was it never open? I thought it was the strong titles. Oh, sorry. The strong, the strong open, the strong okay. open weight. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I made I, the for, mistake. I was yeah, like, yeah. okay, wait, did I watch because the they're blue. match? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah they're yeah. blue. Which uh, we won't say outcomes yet, but. Yeah. I immediately I have this thing, okay, and you can agree with me or disagree with me on this, and I won't be offended. I'm so f wording tired of them of of every company pushing DKC on you. I cannot. Yeah. This guy sucks. Yeah, Stop. I'm not a fan. Of, I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of the LA Dojo guys either. When we watched that, uh, when we watched Forbidden Door as well, they yeah. were not like. But it's not like, something I wanted to watch. For some reason, they're very prominent as a group, but like DKC is on every single show. He's going, yeah. he's on ROH, he's on AEW, he's on Impact. And it's like, dude, stop. Nobody wants this guy. Even like, Kevin Knight. <laughs> Kevin Knight is slightly better, but he's still not. I know, but it's like, what? I don't yeah. get it. I don't get oh, I and, knew to put, Ro- and to put them in a prominent position as this, too. Yes, in, in between two amazing tag teams. And and by yeah. the way. I knew that there was no way in hell that they were going to win this match. They were there to take the pinfall, basically. Yeah. Which and, is what they did. But it was a pretty good match. And, and slowly, slowly, the Motor City Machine Guns are are like establishing themselves as probably one of the greatest tag teams of this and decade. Which is where I was going. So you want to tell them what happens? Well, um, basically, uh, through a mess up... Uh, Motor City Machine Guns do that. I don't know what it is. That power bomb rotator, whatever it is, yeah, I don't know what the hell it's on called. DKC, whatever it is, and they end up getting the pin. And the Motor City Machine Guns are your new strong open weight tag team champions, who are now contracted to Impact. I think there's a working relationship here with Impact Wrestling and AEW because you had an Impact commentator on the show. You have Impact Stars now. You're never open weight championship uh or sorry no, no, i keep calling it never it's the strong open weight not the never open weight so they're your champions now um i think this is all i think this may be it may have been a reaction to carl anderson i think this also may have been a reaction to juice robinson thing mm-hmm. where he's still in has good relationships with new japan and they want to keep the bullet club and he's still a free in, agent but he shows on impact's roster now yeah does he yeah so but either way either way yeah. He's he's still Bullet Club, yeah. and New Japan wants to keep making money off Bullet Club, so it doesn't hurt them to have a working relationship to keep the Bullet Club alive and impact with him becoming the leader now with the yeah. whole Good Brothers being gone, yeah. and and to me that's smart. So I- at the end of the day, I think at the next pay per view, don't be surprised at the next Impact one if there's a lot of New Japan coming showing up at the next yeah. Impact one, and it's gonna put. 
after the last two good Impact pay-per-views, if they pull some New Japan action, they might be set up to really skyrocket. Yeah, really elevate themselves and... It, oh, yeah. It's good. It they 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 could become not in the terms of hardcore, but become like the ECW third brand that everybody watches. I like, think so. Like you have your you have your true diehard WWE fans who watch WWE. Then you have your smart guy, your smart marks that watch that watch WCW who watch AEW for something different. And then you have like the indie fans who watch Impact which is like the indie fans that used to watch ECW kind of thing. So I feel that this is history repeating itself from 20 years ago, 25 years ago. And I think I, I, they're, they're ready for it, and it's going to happen. I, I already see it. Impact is going to get get bigger. But what they need to do, I've probably said this before, is they need to never change the way that they do their shows. Stay in small arenas. Stay mm-hmm. doing your weekly shows in your the Impact Zone. Don't stray yeah. away from that feeling that you create. AEW can do that because they have the money behind it. Yeah, Impact I, doesn't. But even when Impact starts making money here, where I see it happening, especially if somehow they pull Jonathan Gresham, who was on this show, wink, yep. wink. Um, they got juice. And if you get Jonathan, I keep saying this, but I'm not going to stop. They have an amazing, amazing roster. They yeah. have. They probably have one of the most talented women's roster. They have in the best women's wa- roster in wrestling. I'm just gonna say that. Even, um, uh, even Jungle Juice. Even Jungle Juice. But but I think that what they need to do is even if they make money, sell better product, sell sign better talent. Yeah, sign better talent, but keep it in that intimate feeling that you have. You have something special and different than everyone else. Because Ring of Honor will never be that again. No. Not with AEW behind. Ring it. of Honor is just going to become the NXT of mm-hmm. of, of AEW. AEW. So mm-hmm. it's never going to be it's never going to be Impact. Okay. Anyways, we're, yeah. we're way off. We're but off I, topic. But this I, was a I fantastic match. Thing. And like I said, Motor City Machine Guns are slowly. I can see them this cementing themselves. Yeah. This is a plan. So guess what's going to happen? I'm going to predict this right now. Okay. Mm-hmm. This was Motor a City for... Machine Guns against FTR. Cut close. We're getting there. Just you, just freaking wait. Okay. They won these titles. These are mm-hmm. kind, these are like just adding another tag team title from a major company into mm-hmm. their Wikipedia. Okay, but this these don't really matter. So a New Japan's gonna let them keep these for a long friggin' time. Don't be surprised if they become the all time longest whatever for this. Okay, strong open weight. They're gonna win the Impact titles at the next pay per view. Okay, a hundred percent. Okay, so they're gonna have those, and then they're gonna face FTR. Two title holders, three title holders for and the everything for for the New Japan, either the main New Japan tag or for Ring of Honor, and they're gonna win, or maybe it's for everything. Who knows? Yeah, but um, and they're going to win. Machine Guns will are going to be FTR. FTR. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. It's time to move fresh. on. It's time to start fresh with FTR and let them take the AEW tag title. And just hold on to that and have them have a solid yeah. run with that. Yeah, one. that's what needs to happen. But yeah, yeah it, this was a, a huge piece in their careers, just giving them a, t- a pair of tag titles they've never had before. Yeah, because Fantastic. they're already, I, they were already IWGP junior heavyweight uh, yeah. tag champions. So this and is now, just another notch it, in there. That's why so, I was, that's what I was belt. saying. Don't be surprised if the next step is that they get the, the heavyweight titles. Yeah. Yeah, from FTR, I could totally see that. Totally see that. Um, next, we have this Alec uh, Alex Coughlin promo. Something he's an android or something. He says he's a robot, but he's hurt. So robots, how can robots get hurt? Um, okay, uh, it was really strange because to me, it was edited in in a way that what what happened? Where did everything go? It just happened. This just happened out of nowhere. Like I think this was taped before the show. I think so too because it just felt like shoehorned in, and it was not a good promo. No. It was not a good promo, um, but he's going to be at World Tag League. So here's to that. Um, next, we have another great match. And again, young talent facing off against established name. Whereas you have your young talent in Fred Rosser, champion. He's the uh, strong openweight champion against Jonathan Gresham, an established name in the pro wrestling community. Like they even listed off all his accolades like you know, he's probably. They said he was probably the greatest pandemic champion. Yeah, uh, he and he didn't get top ten. Wait, did he get top ten? Yeah, he, he did, did. I right? think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you guys, you guys dogged him. I was the only one that went all in on no, him. No, Anyways, no, no. okay, come on. Anyways, 
Uh, the other guy, number one, looks old as fuck. Uh, I thought he was a really old man. I didn't realize that he was kind of like a newer wrestler. Right. I think he's been in the... I mean, he is old. He's like 37, 38. Okay. He's not a young guy. He looks like Norman Smiley, but Jack. Yeah, but ja- Jack Norman Smiley. Um, wiggle. But yeah, he is an older guy. I, he's much older than Gresham. I think Gresham's like 31, 32. So he's got a good few years on him. Uh, but it he's new to the sport. Jonathan Gresham carried this match. Absolutely. It wasn't, it wasn't a bad match, but it wasn't a good match. It was fine. There were yeah. some really high points in it, but there was also like a lot of nothing. Yeah. And the the result of it was left me like, oh, okay, what the hell is the point of this? If you weren't going to put him over, what the hell was the point of this yeah. match? But you didn't need to put Gresham over. You needed to put Rosser over. And for Rosser to beat someone like Jonathan Gresham. Because... Yeah, but it's also like if you're going to have a guy of his caliber here in for a title, that's kind of yeah. like, like, it's like having Roman Reigns. I know it's a weird example, but fighting someone for the NXT title and making him lose. Yeah, it'd be like Roman fighting Braun Breaker and Breaker going over. Yeah, it's like you're not going to do that. Not at this point. It just that just felt weird to me. I understand the logic of it, but as a fan watching, you obviously are like, okay, how did Gresham not win the title? Like, what the hell is that about? But yeah, it was it was fine. But like I said, once again, it's an established name putting over younger talent. Yeah, but that's what these companies do. It, yeah. WWE doesn't get that. Um, okay. Uh, with Fred Rosser, Fred, like I said, Fred Rosser retains. I think this was the only other... I think that f- first match was the only... One of the only... There's only a couple title matches, which was surprising. Three. Too. Three, four. Well, four, if you count King of Pro Wrestling. Yeah, I'm not counting that. Yeah. Nothing. Um, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Next, we had uh, Homicide, Wheeler Yuta, and Shota Umino against uh, Team Filthy of Tom Lawler and the West Coast Wrecking Crew of Royce Isaac and Jorl Nelson. Um, again, Wheeler Yuta and Shota Umino, and even Tom Lawler, it was a showcase for new talent, I guess. I love Shota. I mm-hmm. think he's, even in New Japan, he's very underused. He He looks like he could be the next Tanahashi. He physically literally looks like looks Tanahashi, like him, yeah. um, and outfit and everything, but they don't use him enough. He's very skilled. We saw him in at Forbidden Door for anyone yep. who has doesn't watch Japanese wrestling, and seeing him here was nice. Seeing Wheeler Yuta is nice because I'm a fan of Wheeler Yuta. I don't really like where AEW is taking him. Shota's me. where in Mexico right now, right? He's yeah, I, AAA, I believe so. I think, or CMLL. Uh, yeah, one of them. I don't He's know. He's on his excursion, basically. With. Yeah. But it's still like he's not showcased enough uh, when they have their events for yep. New Japan. Either way, uh, I, on one side of the ring, I was like, wow, I'm really excited to watch this match. And then when I remembered that it was against Tom Lawler and, the, and Friends, I was like, I don't want to watch this match. Sounds and like then, a bad sitcom, eh? Tom Lawler and Friends. Yeah, I, and not Tom Lawler did not deep hands. No. He so did it this time. That makes less me wanting to watch us. And yeah. like, you know, not really in a gay way. It's just funny to watch him keep taking his pants off. That's his gimmick. Why didn't he do it? It's like the first match. If show didn't have the wrench. Yeah. It's not a, right? yeah, but I mean, I don't want that anymore. Yeah. But, uh, but it, it was like this match again was, it was fine. Yeah. Uh, homicide kind of just existed. Yeah. And the other three were useless. It was yep. basically a showcase of Wheeler Yuta and Shota. And Lawler. Yeah. Uh, to was, a certain extent. It didn't really do much. Yeah. But it was, yeah. Like I said, once again, it was a showcase. Another fine match. It wasn't groundbreaking or anything about it. And when we get to the end of this, this mirrors something else that we reviewed a while ago. Um, And then, yeah, it's, uh, I think Lawler... Watching this match, though, I see Lawler is better suited to the North American style of wrestling than he is to Japanese. Like, he is very much a sports entertainer slash wrestler. Not- his, his character is so Japanese that it's crazy. Mm-hmm. But his in-ring work style, yes. and style is so, like, impact. North American. Yeah. Like, he's, he's the definition of, like, an impact wrestler yeah. for what he does in the ring. Exactly. And that's that's one takeaway. Um that I had from that. And uh, like I said, and Umino, this guy, if they can utilize him a little better, this kid's going to be a star. He's the future. Yeah, definitely. He's their next, he's their next golden, golden. And they're going, they're going to push him because of red shoes. 
Yes, it's his. But dad. it's okay because he is good. Yes. Um, I noticed too during this match too. Uh, they had a lot of Tiger Hattori come out for the matches. So it's it, good to see him yeah. still out and about after his retirement. Um, next match of the night was Minoru Suzuki against Clark Connors with a surprise Ken Shamrock in Clark's Connors. Clark Very Connors cool. corner. Say that three times fast. Clark Connors corner. Clark Connors. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, 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 that was really cool because to, I heard rumblings that he was going to lock himself in on a WWE contract. Ken? As like, uh, like what like, Bret Hart is doing. Like a Legends contract? Yeah. Uh, which is good. I'm glad. And I, was, I, got, I got kind of excited because there was a point where I was like, oh my God. We're gonna get a retirement match. That's Ken Shamrock versus, versus Minoru, Minoru Suzuki. Suzuki. I would totally, I would love that. that That's would be what a... I. That was my expectation. Yeah, at same Wrestle here. Kingdom, you're gonna get, we're gonna get that match. But I like him with Clark Connors. Yeah. Connors is Clark, gonna be a good it, wrestler. Clark, yeah, like, and I've done a 180 on Clark Connors now. After watching him in this match, in the last match, remember he was in Forbidden Door and he was in that four way yeah. match. He was and he good. was just, he was good, but he was. I guess overshadowed by the bigger names that were he in the ring. He was there to be like the fodder for the match, just yeah. to get thrown around. But every time he got a chance to do his thing, he did very well. He I just very... think the character is really stupid. Yeah, like you're uh, an outback guy. You're not yeah. even Australian. Like what? And I don't get it. So I was kind of watching this a little bit the night before and a little bit the next day. So I watched it in in parts, right? And when I was, I got to the, um, the, the Friday night when I was watching it, I got to the end of the Clark Connors match. And after the match is over, um, for it, for anyone, uh, Minoru Suzuki goes over. Um, they were teasing what you were going to, you, you're saying uh, maybe a retirement match. And then Suzuki, which is out of character, shakes Connors' hand and like basically points to him and says, I love this kid with a few more expletives. <laughs> Yeah, I think that he's going to end up in Suzuki Goon. Yeah, I could see that. I could totally see that. But that's when I was watching this on Friday night. That's when I fell asleep. And I was falling asleep at that point. And then they started playing Clark Connors music. And I don't know if you remember Clark Connors music. It's just like, what the Just jarred me awake. Like, what the hell was that? But uh, yeah, it was. But like I said, another another good showcase match for a young up and coming talent. Even though Suzuki goes over, Clark Connors just looked spectacular in this match. Like yeah, this... I, I, but this is like this is the the smart kind of putting over to me, mm-hmm. not the Jonathan Gresham way. But I get that that match was for a title. Yeah, but but you want to put this guy over and make him look good without taking away what the other guy is bringing. Yeah, like he got in some good offense against Suzuki. It's oh, just well, Su- Suzuki was better. The slaps that they were going through were crazy. Yeah. At one point, he hit Suzuki so hard that, and then Suzuki went on like this rampage attack. And I was like, holy shit, he's upset. There's I his thought, receipt. Yeah. I thought for sure he was just going bah, 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 like ham. And the slaps yeah. were so loud. But, and, and this is the point of the night where the matches started getting better. Uh, oh, for me at least. <laughs> uh, this even this match, I had fun watching it, but it wasn't like a great match. Yeah, fun. Um, but yeah, and then you know Suzuki puts over Clark Connors, and like you said, I, this is could be where it's heading. Either it's a Ken Shamrock versus Suzuki retirement match, or it's a Clark Connors becoming part of Suzuki Gun. Yeah, or maybe there's going to be a tag match with Suzuki and Shamrock against. I don't know, two old guys. Great Great Buddha. Buddha. Hey! Shinsuke Nakamura. <laughs> Listen, uh, speaking of that, there's that match coming. It was great Muda. You know, yeah. like, okay, yeah. But yo, and I'm uh, surprised they let Shinsuke do that. He's trying to expand. He wants to get his the Japanese fans back. Okay. Uh yeah. You know what I mean? Like, which WWE... is funny because Muda just showed up on Impact like two months ago. Yeah, and he was on AEW as well. Yeah. Or sorry, not impact. That's what I meant to say. Oh, AW. AW, okay. Yeah, but because uh, he, he, he partnered with Sting. Remember? Here's the whole thing. If anyone saw that, you know that at this point, this guy can literally barely move. Yeah, and I'm not really excited to watch a match between a guy who can't move and Shinsuke. Like That's probably one of the greatest Japanese wrestlers of all time. <laughs> yeah, it's like. 
Best... I mean, Muda was one of the greatest too at one point. Yeah. But I mean, Shinsuke is the greatest talent on SmackDown, which and he's never utilized. Yeah, of course. But you know, that's uh that's uh WWE booking though. Um next is the what I thought was the worst part of the night. It's that backstage segment with Kylan King and uh Mayu. Uh was it Mayu uh Iwatani? It looked like it was filmed on an eight millimeter handy cam. That's not even what bothered me. What bothered me was after they said, like, time for the main event. Sorry, that's Mark Henry. But yeah. when they did that, they just, the camera just paused and they're just yeah. looking at the camera. And it was like 30 seconds of just looking at the camera. And it's like two people who are about to fight each other and they just had that conversation of, like, no, I'm going to beat you. Shouldn't just be standing there looking at each other for 30 seconds after the camera goes, like, yeah. after the scene's done. This is probably filmed at the same time when they filmed that in ring segment with Alex Coughlin. But I, I always notice that too. Is even in AEW, like when the segment's done, cut away immediately. Don't yeah. let the camera just hang there. It looks stupid. Yeah, Anyways. it's uh, it's very, very much so. It and you could and with AEW too, you can hear the background with AEW sometimes. Like you could hear like a match that happened three matches prior. You can in hear the, the back- music. Yeah, yeah. So um. To be fair, that's one thing that WWE does really well. They film all their promos pre-show, so this way you don't hear any of that background music or any of that. They also film if you if you ever notice, like very very far away from like the immediate backstage. Area. Yeah, very true, very true as well. Um, after that, like I said, it was it looked it looked like it was filmed on eight millimeter those old yeah, camcorders. It was. Bad quality. It wasn't that great of a promo either. Um, the interviewer, that's the girl from Strong, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I forgot her name, but uh, irrelevant. not important. Uh, irrelevant. Um, next, you have uh, the SWA Heavyweight Women's Championship match between challenger Kylan King against Mayu Ido- Iwatani. Um, again, showcase for Kylan. It wasn't a very good match. No. I was very disappointed that this is like the, a, a co-headliner. I- Iwatani is hyped as like the biggest wrestler in in stardom. In stardom, is it stardom? Yeah, she's the the been the ho- title holder for a while. She's always in the top of the league. She's promoted as all their like. Did she make the top ten the games? I don't know. I didn't. I never. I never saw the female one. Uh, they, they released it last week. Yeah, but you're right. Well, we'll have to do that list immediately <laughs> after this video. Um, but yeah, it's to to me, it was like okay, it wasn't like a bad match. Don't get me wrong, but like when you're promoting up and comer Kylan, and and I know that she's pretty good. I've seen her wrestle a few times. Yeah. She's trained by Billy Gunn, and uh, we know that Iwatani is like the main. Yeah, like a selling point of stardom right now, and it's like to especially, watch this match. I was es- like, what? especially with that the historic crossover event coming up as well. Which, by the way, I watched the female matches from mm-hmm. uh, Royal Quest or whatever it was called, and they were terrible. <laughs> they were yeah, I... terrible. Oh boy! Sorry. Um, oh boy. But yeah, I'm glad we didn't do Royal Quest. <laughs> we no. got probably would have got a really low score. Um, but yeah, I mean, not, I don't want to sit here and be super negative about it and say this match sucked, but like from what I was expecting to get out of this, I was disappointed. Iwatani did not make the top 10. All right. That's, uh, she's not in the top 10 guys. So, and, and someone who like, they, they made a, they made a big point too of like, oh, they're building, uh, they're making a movie based on her life story as well. And She's the equivalent to me. She's the equivalent of the Japanese page. They made a movie about her life story too, but her life story wasn't that great. Yeah. Um. Also, Paige's career was pretty crappy. Yeah. Um. And to be honest with you, she's not that great of a wrestler. Nope. And I don't know why my come at me internet but... colors, but we'll just yeah. let it happen. <laughs> I feel like I'm in that scene in Willy Wonka when they're going through the tunnel. <laughs> when they're going through that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's just no way of knowing <laughs> which direction we are going. We don't want to get sued, okay? But yeah, um, 
yeah, sorry, I went off topic with Paige. Yeah, but like, uh, yeah I, I don't under, I still don't get the hype around it. But, yeah, uh, this is she's like the Becky Lynch of this company. Yeah, she's no because well, yeah, Becky Lynch I think would be a little bit better, but okay, but yeah, in terms of like the yeah. person, um, yeah, yeah, she wasn't uh, the, hype, the way she the, the way she would. I guess the way she was hyped didn't the way and the way what I saw, like un, I haven't seen too many of her matches, but from what I have seen, the hype doesn't match the, well, I never seen any matches, but actually I, I have think seen I've one. Seen, I've seen a couple, like not I've a actually seen one, but I was going into this thing. Okay. Pay-per-view. This is going to be epic. I'm going to get to see her on this big sk- uh, stage yeah. doing her thing. And the match ended and I was like, okay, that was uh, a, a rampage episode. Yeah, very, very much so. Very much so. Um, I think it's also hindered the fact that the ring was like, I don't want to yeah, use it as it's really small, though. It was. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's like. I the match between Riho and Jamie Hayter was mm-hmm. on TV and was far superior to this match. Yes. If you want to do a Japanese established wrestler against an up and coming American wrestler, well, not American. But, but yeah. American company Western, wrestler, yeah. this is that was the match to watch, yeah. not this one. Very much so, very much so. And obviously, we knew the title, especially against someone like a Kylan King, who really doesn't have a contract with anybody and has been bounced, has been bouncing yeah, and around she's the last. Still time. like rough around the edges, so it was yeah. weird that she was the choice for this. Yeah, I would have expected like Diana Perrazzo, but I mean, yeah. Hey, I'll watch no. that match. You can give me that match. I'll take that one. Um. Yeah, uh, Iwatani goes over. She retains in a short match. Not much else can be said about that one. Um, Next, we have our co-main event. Shingo Takagi against El Phantasmo, ELP himself for the King of Pro Wrestling Championship. Now, for people who don't know, the King of Pro Wrestling Championship is something that you hold on to for the year, and then you're labeled that you're a temporary champion until the year is over, and then you're then you're the champion for that year. It's almost like a hot potato. It's like if the king of the ring could get passed around until the next king of the ring. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. And then you're you're the king for the year, I guess. Yeah. But uh, this is in regards to a rematch they had a few weeks ago in the Who's Your Daddy match. Which was a good match. Which was a good match. And this one was equally as good. Yes. Uh, my one thing with this was, okay, I have two issues. Okay, the the uh, spitting in the face thing mm-hmm. where he yelled out, I'm the great Muda, which was like, OK, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. But they did that on purpose mm-hmm. and they made him use red spray so that it added this feeling of hardcoreness looking what look wise to the match without anyone actually having to bleed. having to... ELP did bleed for a little bit. I saw some like around yeah, yeah. his nose, but but, but it was like. The, they were not planning to have any blood in this match, so this was like the workaround. But if, that... I think it's that's a New York State law. Is it the New York the New York Fighting Commission? Yeah, I think that's unless it's if it's that's why UFC had so many issues getting into New York about the blood. Okay, well I know Toronto had a lot of the same issues with uh, yeah. But if things. you were if you came into this match halfway through, you're thinking, what the hell happened? That's what I mean. That, that was my point, right? If you missed that, I rewound it like four times. I was like, wait, who got freaking smashed in the face? Yeah. Um, because it was a lot. Yeah, uh, you see, like the white t-shirt too. Shingo's wearing a white t-shirt, and it's like, yeah. oh, right over here. And I thought I he think was like, that, that's why he was wearing a white t-shirt. Yeah, but just to... also, I I don't really like these faux hardcore matches where. Do you add weapons to it just for the sake of adding weapons? And at the end of the match, there's some table spots which yeah. I very much liked. But the ladder spot was good too, where the ladder yeah. just like where he throws them into the ladder and the ladder collapses in on itself. But until then, all the use of weapons was just like a, a WWE plunder match. Yes, yes, it, it was like a, the most fakest way you could possibly have a hardcore match. That uh, the bending, like the bendable bat that Alba Fire uses. Like just cookie sheets. Yeah. Let's just get lots of cookie sheets. Yeah. But I mean, it's not, it wasn't as good. It was just still a good, grow, really good match. Still a good match. Really uh, don't good get match. me wrong. There was a weird spot where uh, they give him the dick punch and then he starts licking his fist. Yeah. That made me a yeah. little uncomfortable. <laughs> there was also a spot in a match earlier where someone caught a dick. Oh, no. Wait. It's in the next match. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, it's yeah. It, yeah. This the, the relationship between Shingo and LP is getting really weird. Yeah. Uh, I think this this ends the feud. That's it. This is done. I think it has to be. Yeah. I think this is this this is a spotlight huge because Shingo looked like a boss in both matches, mm-hmm. but LP put everything out there. Yeah. In both matches and people are recognizing him as a character they want to latch onto, especially in Japan. When she, when he comes out, well, there's a lot of people with his towels mm-hmm. and like his merch, which it's if anyone's not seen Japanese wrestling, it's very different. They bring like all of their merch with them and like hold yeah, it like up the... when the wrestler comes out. So they'll have like little teddy bears and like yeah. action fingers and they'll hold them all with the together. scarves and the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you'll see it. People will bring their their unopened like figure and like hold it that's, up. That's that's their way of showing appreciation to the re- and by all means that works. That works for them, right? Every, you know, and uh but uh there was a cool there was a Spicoli driver through the table there was that pendulum driver onto the all the chairs by Shingo. Like it got really a little bit more violent towards the end, but yet they incorporated actual wrestling moves. It's not like yeah, uh, the the finishing the move that finished the match. It's like a variation the, of a CR three through the table. Yeah, was amazing. Yeah, I was not expecting that at all. I thought there was going to be like a reversal, and then no one was going to go through the table. Yeah. But it looked like it hurt really bad, though. So Shingo looked like he got hurt from it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, and Shingo goes over. He retains the King of Pro Wrestling Championship. Um, I mean, not as good as the first match, but still a really good match, in my opinion. What was the first match? Their first match. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, what match are we talking about? No, the, the, this uh, the is Who's arguably, Your Daddy This is in the argument. We won't spoil anything yet for match of the night. Yeah, it's 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 there. Um, then after that, we had a little bit of a promo and then we go to a little background on the match and we go through to for the main, the main main event of Jay White and Juice Robinson against Okada and Eddie Kingston. Who's the outlier in this match? Eddie Kingston Eddie does Kingston. not belong here. No, there is three very skilled wrestlers and Eddie Kingston who took a dick punch yep. and no sold it. I was expecting him to pull a cup out or something. Yep. And he didn't. Very so, very Moxley esque. Yeah, it was uh I was like, okay, you just got punched in the dick, guy. Yeah. But uh I like the chops at the beginning, like Jay White's chopping Eddie, and then Eddie gives him that one chop and he gets like thrown like Jay's selling in this match was Jay's something so else. good. And, yeah. and listen, when you have a crowd behind you that's actually yelling out two sweet, sweet it's it adds a whole new level to Jay White's chops because usually we're used to him just screaming it and nobody saying anything. It's like, Shh. <laughs> like, Come on, show some, but yeah. But and I think that that added to the match too was there was an actual crowd there, a live crowd vocalizing. You know but what I mean? it was it was too small of a crowd to the point where you could individually hear everything everyone yelled, and I didn't yeah. like that. You could hear like the random hecklers in the background. Yeah, you could punch hear, them in the dick. You could hear people just talking in the background of yeah. behind the commentators. Yeah, it picked because it's such a small venue, it picked up everything. Everything. But uh, like I said, it started off a little slow. Typical New Japan. Um, they kept Okada and Jay away from each other for a good 10 minutes. Yeah. It's which funny is... because the, the thing at the beginning was uh, when Juice was saying, he's like, I'll handle or our, our, uh, Jay will take care of Okada. So it's just me versus Eddie, Eddie Kingston. But it ended up being most of the match was juice taking on Okada, Okada and, yeah. and like handling him actually, yeah. which was going toe to toe against Okada. But that's also Okada being that ring general that he is, you know yeah. what I mean? Like the experience that he has shows, but um, like I said, it started off a little slow. It got really good towards the end. Um, there were some great spots, um, but then Jay all of a sudden hits a blade runner on Eddie Kingston and that's it. Game over. Like the finish felt like it came out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to like, I don't know if it's obviously they're preparing for the match at Wrestle Kingdom. That's where yes. this is going. Jay White's not losing the title all the way. Because he's Wrestle done Kingdom. with the feud with Jonah. That's done. Yeah. And 
Okada seems kind of, he, at least here, maybe because he feels like he's better than this, but he feel he looked disgruntled for most of this match. Like he didn't want to be there. Yeah, like I flew across the world to put on a show in this tiny ass little place. I'm a, I'm a the arena seller. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like I'm used to selling out the Budokan and like to be in a tag match where I have nothing to do with the feud that's happening. Yeah. Uh, it just it, it came off like that. I don't know if they're yeah. just trying to sell that aspect. That could be what it is, but it like yeah. visually looked that way. Yeah, because he was absent for most of the match. Yeah, he just kind of stood. Even I don't know if you noticed this. He wasn't even on his corner for a no. bunch of the match. Oh yeah, I noticed that. I totally he just noticed walked that. down on his own and just stayed. It wasn't there. Yeah, I noticed that. Eddie was in the. Eddie took. Eddie was in there for a good. I would say twelve to fifteen minutes of the twenty minutes this match went for. And it wasn't a bad match. No, it wasn't. It was a good match, actually. It, anytime, yeah. anytime you have Jay White and Juice Robinson in a match, it's good. Like, I mean, at least yeah. for me. Juice is so underappreciated. He is. He is completely. But like I said, uh, Blade Runner, pretty much out of nowhere, they're kind of trying to make that Blade Runner into the, I guess, the RKO. Like, once it hits it, out of nowhere, that's it. It's over. Nobody... I mean, I actually like it. The thing I issue I have with it, with this specific one, was Eddie Kingston, who's usually a really good seller, just mm-hmm. face planted and just lay there. Mm, yeah. Usually, someone will do like some twitching or like a backflip after they fucking like a, one of the stunners. Yeah. But I was like, okay. Yeah, but uh, and yeah, and obviously, you knew Kingston was there to take the pin because they're not going to pin Okada. I would have actually had Jay White pin Okada in this match just to show, hey, I can beat you. I think so. I think, it, and it should have, even if it was done through cheating, it should have been that. Yeah, that's, at least that's my thought. But I, agree. I guess Okada probably said, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I'm sure that's, I'm actually, not sarcastically, I'm yeah. sure that's what He's happened. like, I'm, I ain't doing that. And uh, that was the, that was the main event. That was the show. Um, I mean, Ring work, it was a good show in the ring. The production was not as okay. the quality that I was expecting. I'm not going to let the announcing for me affect it at all. So that's 0% yeah. factor in me. Though I will admit, the Japanese announcing is far less amusing than the English yeah. announcing. Um, um, for me, Ian Riccoboni and Alex Kozlov did not have a good, I guess chemistry and matt raywald was there as the mediator to kind of like okay let's ease the tension not the tension but like let's break the monotony i guess yeah i yeah. think that's at least my opinion with the commentating but other than that ian riccoboni he's a decent announcer he's he's pretty so, good that i'm not factoring in mm-hmm. visually i'm gonna let a little bit of it affect oh, the yeah. score not not like majorly, but I feel like it has to at least a little bit mm-hmm. come into this. Cause like the setup even for like the entrances was dog shit. Like, like if somebody slipped and fell off that stage, that's it. They're dead. Yeah. Because like, the stairs were so point, steep. At one point, uh Iwatani almost fell down the fell. stairs. Yeah. Um but yeah, I mean, okay, that that aside, that's gonna factor in. For me, I'll I'll go, I guess. Match sure. of the night for me was the three-way tag team match. Yeah, I agree. Same here. Uh, that was my favorite match. Honorable was, mention to the Shingo match. Yeah, honorable mention to Shingo. Uh, the worst match for me was probably... Because there is a worse match. This yes. is one where I can say this. It's It's got to be either... No, nah, I'll give it to the women's match. Only because I was so disappointed by what should have been a good match that I have to pick. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. That's my pick as well. Uh, Coming close would have been the, well, no, because that's Suzuki. I would have been the the three way, the team filthy against homicide. Yeah. Only because only because nothing really happened in that match. No, but uh, Wheeler and and shown uh, uh, Umino, they're good. They put on a good show. Wheeler's great. Yeah. And AEW is about to absolutely flub him. It's about yeah. to, they're going to shit at him. Especially if BCC breaks up, it's all downhill for him. Yeah. Um, I could see, he's a guy I could see benefiting from joining our NXT. Yeah, big time. Big time. 
like, can you imagine like Yuta versus someone like a Carmelo Hayes, Wheeler versus Tyler yeah. Bate, uh, Wheeler, uh, Wheeler versus Ilya Dragunov. Like, yeah, he, if he was in Noah or all Japan, even he would thrive. He would be a yeah. star there. But um, I'm going to give this a seven out of 10. OK, because it, it wasn't bad enough for me to give it a like a bad score. But yeah. it, it was just fine. Like, would yeah. I watch it again? Yeah, I would. But I'd I would watch a couple matches. I wouldn't watch the whole show, but yeah. Like, it's just, you know what I mean? Like, it, it was fine. Yeah, um, I'm not that far off. I gave it a little higher. Uh, I gave it a 7.2. Um, I took a lot of points away because of production quality. And I was expecting, like you said, some of the matches I was just expecting. This was very much... Kind of like Declaration of Power, but on a little bit lower level. So I gave Declaration a 7-4. This one I gave a 7-2 because it, See, the matches well, were me, good, but they just didn't go anywhere. I was probably at like a 7-2 or a 7-3, and then it lost those points because of the production Production value. quality, yeah. Same thing. Like, this is a, a PPV. Yeah, you like, actually had to pay money for this one. You had to pay money for this. Not cheap either. It was like $50 Canadian. Canadian, yeah. And no, it was not worth fifty dollars Canadian. No, when for fifty dollars you get AEW shows. For fifty dollars you get WWE Network for the whole year. For the year. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Yeah, and like I said, I was expecting more from the production quality, expecting more from the just in general. Like this was very much like some of these matches just felt like they were thrown together just to put on a show. Yeah. Like the matches on the previous night, some of the matches on the, I'll quickly go through them. You had uh, the night before, this was called the night before. Jeez, you know, great title. Um, DKC and Kevin Knight go over forever hooligans. Uh, Fred Rosser defeated a returning crowbar. Who better than Canyon, right? Uh, crowbar was great when he was crowbar. When he was with David Flair, exactly. Um, then you had Ozzy Open defeat the SAT. Never heard of these guys. You had yeah. Mike Bailey. On the on the night before against Mascarada Dorada. That's not a bad match. Right? And you had Minoru Suzuki against Tracy Williams, former ROH champion. Like then Shingo Takagi uh against Jake something. And you had like an a 12 man elimination tag team match of Okada and Yo against Amazing Red, John Moxley, Eddie Kingston, and Homicide on one team. Like Moxley was on the night before and he wasn't on this one against Jay White, Juice Robinson, El Fantasmo, Tom Lawler, Royce Isaacs, and Jor L. Nelson. You want to know something? I I have a, a weird feeling that that main event was better. No, no, to, to, just separate than that. To, to please uh, the, the friendship and the relationship they have, that John Moxley is going to lose the title to a Japanese wrestler. You think that's going to happen? I think so. Who? I don't know. It's one of the. It has to be one of the bigger names for sure. It's got to be like Okada or Jay White, a, a Naito, or yeah, like maybe Bullet Club comes in, does like a takeover where they're like just start effing everybody up for like a couple weeks, and then it goes to the pay per view and he wins. Can you imagine dual champion Jay White? Yeah, I would love dual championship Jay White. Uh, Jay White is like not on the top ten. Number one. Mm -hmm. Um. So he needs to be him and uh what's his name? Josh Alexander. And uh what's his name? The other guy. Will Osprey. Will Osprey. That guy. That guy, the other guy. <laughs> but uh why will o like these are guys that should be on the top 10 and are not like hey we, we digress. I digressed. I digress. Uh but where was he? Like, I'm looking for where like Shingo was number 11 on the list. Moxley was 12. Josh Alexander was 14. Doesn't matter. Josh Alexander should have been like number one. Rollins is low. He was 17. Rollins should have been in the top 10. Yeah. And which was like, I'm looking at the top 20. Is and Jay White there? No. Jay White is number 23. That's right ridiculous. behind Chris Jericho at 22. That's also ridiculous. And then I'm looking, Zach Saber, uh, Will Ospreay's at 27. 
Okay, cut this. Cut this off. Yeah. I can't deal with this anymore. Broad Breakers at 26. Will Ospreay's 27. Sammy Guevara ahead of Zack Sabre Jr.? Yeah, Sammy Guevara shouldn't even be on the top 100. Like, uh, like it's... Okay, I'm getting angry now. Xavier Woods, Woods is in the top 40. All right, guys. Thank you <laughs> thank for, you for coming. this. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I mean, go out. Watch a couple matches. I wouldn't... If you want to watch the whole show, watch the whole show. Um, but watch the opener. Watch, definitely watch the tag match. Like just, the, I would the, just watch the whole thing, but yeah. you're not. It's not all going to be good. No. Fast forward through the parts you think you don't like, but definitely stick through the three way tag match for the for the tag titles, and the main and the two headlining matches for sure. And with that, guys, thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next week for Crown Jewel and Battle Autumn. So we'll see you next week for that. See ya.